If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we're going to do an actual real e exam example of using the master theorem. And this comes from the gate, let me move this up, 2017. And let's see, this was set to, and for some reason, in some places it says question 30, and some questions it's 50, some places it's 56. So I'm going to do the one that was actually on the official site, which says 30. So this is question 30, and that's how I'm going to list it on my playlist. But in on some sites, I see 56. So, so we have a recurrence function. So t of n is going to be 2t square root n plus 1. So And it's um, t of 1, so like the the bottom case. So remember at the bottom of the recursion tree, uh, we can assume that that is a big O of 1. Well, we don't actually really uh, care about that. That's not a, as important. So we would think, oh, can we apply the master theorem to this? And the answer is no, or at least not directly. Because, well, we have the A term out front, because, so that's two subproblems of the identical size. Here's f of n, no problem. But this right here is not of the form n over a constant. Okay, It is n over square root n, but a and b here have to be constants. And square root n is not n over a constant. So we could break out our, term, uh, our technology of looking at the recursion tree, the computation tree, and look at it directly from this perspective. But there's a different way that I want to demonstrate here where we can use the master theorem. And that is something called a domain transformation which is actually a pretty useful tool. The idea is we're going to express n and square root n in a different way so that we'll get a recurrence of some other variable that is based on the master theorem and then solve it that way and then plug n back into that equation. So we're changing n to be something else, which is easy for the master theorem because we can't apply it here and then putting n back into the equation. So what you should notice here is that this is square root n, obviously. Um, so what we're going to do is the common technique here is to have this be 2 to the power of something equal to n. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let k here be um, is not equal to this is going to be such that uh, 2 to the power k is equal to n. Okay, then why is this a good idea? Then this is the same thing as saying that t of uh, 2 to the k, because that's what n is, is going to be 2 times t of 2 to the power k over 2, where the over 2 is in the exponent, and then we still have the plus one out front, okay? And this is not quite in the right format either, right? Because this is not something divide, is not n or k divided by a certain thing. It's k divided by something in the exponent, but that's not what we actually want here. So we're going to actually do domain transformation again. So, so this was, um, domain transformation number one. And now we're going to do domain transformation number two. And what is that going to be? Instead of looking at the parameter, we're going to look at the whole function itself. So here I'm going to let, uh, so what's a good name for this? Let's call it A of M to be equal to, oh, oh no, no, sorry. I'm going to let a of k be equal to t of 2 to the k. 
So whatever this crazy function is, I'm going to call it a of, of k. So a is a completely different function. Okay. Um, and we can easily see that um, a of k over 2 is the same thing as t of 2 to the k over 2 because we're just so the parameter here is just what's in the exponent of the 2 power right here. So k over 2 is what's in the exponent here. So we, why do we want to do this? Well, what we're going to get is a of k, which is what this is right here, is equal to 2 times a of k over 2 plus 1. And now this is in a format that works for the master theorem because we have two problems of size k over 2. And we can actually heuristically figure out what uh, this is. Uh, oops. I didn't actually give the exact details of the master theorem, but it's not actually important here. Because look at this. At each of the levels, we're only paying a penalty of 1. So the number of levels is going to be log k, roughly, because we're dividing by 2 every single time. So, and we actually have two uh, uh, versions of the of the same recurrence call, the same recursive call. And we actually kind of did something like this before. Um, so here, what we're going to actually do is we're going to notice here that if you solve this uh, directly, this turns out to be big O of K. So uh, if you actually expand the recurrence out, uh, you will get exactly big O of K, and I invite you to do so in the comments. It, so this is actually kind of surprising, but it, it is true, and it's something that you should at least be familiar with. Whenever you have 2 times some recursive function, K over 2, plus 1, or actually any constant here, so if this is a constant, then you'll get big O of K. Okay, so let's actually... Uh, uh, plug this back in. Well, what we actually can actually get uh, even more precise is that it's not just big O of k, it's, I, it's exactly equal to k. Assuming that the bottom of the recursion is uh, a constant which is 1. Okay, so um, we, we can't necessarily assume that here, but the original problem from the gate exam had um, the bottom of the recursion tree being a constant, uh, being it having it be one. So let's just assume that it actually is one here, um, because you'll see why in a sec. Um, although it actually won't matter. So, we'll, but let's handle it anyway. We could put a big O of k in here, but let's just assume that it actually is k. So then the total runtime is k. Well then. What we have from before is that k is equal to, oops, so 2 to the k is um, equal to n. So uh, what is the actual runtime here? Well, this is simple. We can uh, simplify this to be k being uh, big O of log n. So the runtime of the algorithm was k. And k is equal to log n, so what we get immediately from this is that t of n is a big O of log n. Okay, so this recursive, uh, this funky recursive um, uh, recurrence relation um, that didn't fit into the master theorem, we could fit, uh, we could mold it into being. Uh, something we could put in the master theorem by use of these things called domain transformations, which is pretty cool. So uh, what could we actually do here? Well, could we actually put a big O of k here? So let's say that it's some constant c times k, because that's what a big O means. So if I make this change up here, so um, 2 to the k is equal to n, so uh, so what are we going to get here? So k, again, is going to be big O of log n. But if we multiply 
this thing by c, because c is the constant here, the runtime is c times k, k is log n. So if we multiply by c, that's another constant, but that's going to be swallowed up in the big O notation again. So again, we'll get big O of log n. So here I can actually put anything I want as long as it's a particular constant, I'll still get log n out of it. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about this particular gate question in the comments. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.